Hello friends, this video on integers part 1 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Topics to be covered in this lesson are Introduction What are integers? Integers on number line Comparison of integers Addition of integers on number line Additive inverse Subtraction of integers on number line Numbers the first numbers which naturally come to us, they are nothing but the natural numbers. So the numbers starting from 1 to infinity, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so on till infinity, they are all natural numbers. Why are they natural numbers? Because they come very much naturally to us. If you ask a small kid, maybe aged 2 or 3, if you ask him uh, to count, so how, how does he start counting? He starts with 1. He starts with 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. So, look at the fingers in your hand. How many fingers do you see in, in your one hand? There are five. Five is a natural number. When you look at your bank balance, it might be some 2,000 rupees. So, 2,000 is again a natural number. So, all of these numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 till infinity, they, they are all natural numbers. Now, you might ask, what exists below one? Like we see... Below 3 exists 2. Below 2 exists 1. What before 1? What is there before 1? So let us look at this example. Let's say that this little boy has 5 toffees. So he has 5 candies with him. Now he gave, he ate one. So it became 4. He ate another. It became 3. He ate one more. So now he has 2. So when he eats one more, he is left with one. So gradually it was five. So from five, it reduced to four, from four to three, three to two, two to one. Now what will be there after one? So when he eats up this last candy, what is left with him? Nothing. He is left with zero candies. So that means what exists below one? Zero exists below one. Now the question is, we never counted this zero in natural numbers because we said that natural numbers come naturally to us and we naturally start counting from one. So what about zero? Where, where should this zero go? Because zero also has a very important role to play in mathematics. So therefore came whole numbers. So whole means complete. So whole numbers would include all the natural numbers plus zero because zero plays a very significant role. So now we thought that okay with whole numbers in place we have covered all the numbers because now we have included zero as well. So all numbers starting from zero till infinity they are all categorized under whole numbers. So now you have the complete set of numbers that is what we thought at that time. So when you look at a digital clock so how does the timer starts? It starts from zero, zero, one, two, three, four, five and so on. Or you think of the importance of zeros when you talk about money. Let's say that you have 300 rupees and your friend has 30,000 rupees. So how does the two numbers differ? So you had 300 and your friend has 30,000. So how is 300 different from 30,000? 300 has two zeros, 30,000 has four zeros. So the num as the number of zeros increase, the value of that number increases considerably. So even one more zero. So there is a huge difference between 30 and 300, but there is just a difference of a zero. So zero plays a very cr critical role. And when you think of money, you get to know its importance all the more because you very is, you can very easily relate to the difference between rupees 30 and rupees 300. Right? So zero plays a crucial role. Now, let's say that in a classroom, there is one student sitting in the class. So imagine the strength of the classroom, a big classroom, just one student inside the classroom. Now, instead of one, if you have 10, so do, does that make a difference? In the first case, you had one student. In the later case, you have 10 students. So of course, it makes a difference. But as such, number-wise, the difference is only in a zero. So zero is very critical and it plays a very crucial role in mathematics in, when we talk about numbers. So fine. So everybody was happy that, okay, now zero is also included uh, in the set of numbers and that is why we had whole numbers. 
Now the next question was what exists below 0? So if 0 exists below 1, what exists below 0? Something must be existing below 0 as well. So let's analyze again. Let's say the same little boy who had five chocolates and he started eating up one one chocolate gradually. So at last he was left with one chocolate. When he ate that up, he had zero number of chocolates. That is, he had no chocolate. Now let's say the boy still wants to eat some chocolate. So what he does? Now this time he goes to another, his elder brother and asks him to borrow a chocolate and borrows a chocolate from him. So his elder brother had good number of chocolate collection. So this little boy, he asked his brother that, okay, brother, you give me one chocolate now. I will return it to you later. That is, today I will eat this chocolate, but some other time when I buy chocolates for myself, I will return this one chocolate to you. Right? So basically, this chocolate is not of this little boy's. He has borrowed it from somewhere and he took this chocolate. Now, the moment he took this chocolate, how many chocolates he has? Does he have one chocolate? No, because it is not his own chocolate. It is a chocolate which he has to return after some time. So how many chocolates he has? So there we introduce the negative numbers. So we say that now the boy has minus one chocolate. Minus one means he has one chocolate, but this is in negative balance. That means it is not his own chocolate. He has to return it later. Now, if he borrows one more chocolate, from his elder brother. So how many chocolates he has now? He has minus two chocolates. That means these two chocolates are not his own, but he has to return it later. So basically what we realized is there are negative numbers which exist below zero. And these negative numbers are just like the positive numbers with a negative sign. So you have numbers like minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, and so on till infinity on the negative side. So this was something which was very interesting. Now the question was okay, first we had only natural numbers, then we included whole numbers for zero. So now what should we do in order to include these negative numbers also? Now you might be thinking that I never came across negative numbers like, I mean, do they really exist? Or do we really need negative numbers? So let me give you some example from our day to day life, which we all make use of. And we will see that negative numbers play a role there. Now, let's say on a hot sunny day, if you uh, try to find out the temperature outside, you see that the temperature is some if, if it's very hot in, in a very, very hot summer day, the temperature might go as high as 50 degrees Celsius as well in, in a moderate warm day the temperature might be somewhere around 25 degrees celsius or 22 degrees celsius or something like that but sometimes during in, in the hill, hilly area especially in hill stations during the extreme winter time when you look at the temperature sometimes it starts freezing you have snowfall outside you have mountains covered with snow so when that scenario comes when you try to find out the temperature outside you see the temperature goes as low as minus 10 degrees celsius so what is this minus 10 degrees celsius this tells you that the temperature is even below zero degrees celsius so when the temperature reduces below zero degrees celsius what happens water starts to freeze that is water starts getting converted into ice right so what is the temperature now the temperature is minus 10 so you need negative numbers to describe such low temperatures if there are no negative numbers existing how would you describe this extremely low temperature because you would not have anything uh, to express before zero so zero degrees celsius would have been the minimum temperature but that's not the case that's because we have a complete set of negative numbers which takes care of these low temperatures. So this is one place where we make use of negative numbers. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four-step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.